Hello, vinyl community. Hey, everybody. Hey, let me get adjusted here. I have to sit back a little further in my seat. Hope y'all are doing well. Joe, mean Mr. Mayo, has sent out a question to all of us uh, to name 10 of our most memorable Beatle albums. So, uh, Paul, fit to be tie dyed, has done this as well, and now I'm going to jump in and do it also. So my first album up is Abbey Road. This is a British press of Abbey Road. But this album has meaning for me because Octopus's Garden is on here. And Octopus's Garden is kind of special because that's the first time that I remember uh, seeing for the first time on the Ed Sullivan Show, believe it or not, Ed Sullivan. Um, the Muppets debuted, and one of the very first things the Muppets ever did was Octopus's Garden. So they did off of this album, the Beatles song, which I was totally amazed, didn't know what it was, you know, as a kid. So Abbey Road has a special meaning because that song, Octopus's Garden, was very special. So that was kind of neat. I really enjoyed that. That was, that was fun to know and to have. I'm moving forward, turning this down. Yeah, I'm turning this down because I, I don't want it to drown me out. It sounded like it was, didn't it? It's like listening. So, anyway, so Octopus's Garden has a special memory of, of seeing the Ed Sullivan show. And that's kind of where I first started watching them. I didn't see the Beatles in 64 like a lot of people. I was second generation and a little bit older, or a little bit younger and didn't get to see the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. So I saw them much later on Ed Sullivan when they did that. Okay, my next album is this one. Um, I got this album, it's the American one. A lot of these albums I'm gonna show are either American or just the regular albums because uh, at that time when I first started collecting, that's all I could find. That's all that was out there was just the American stuff. So, you know, as you got deeper and deeper into Beatles and collecting, you found different imports and all that kind of stuff. But in the beginning, I didn't find all that. You know, I didn't have the uh, means and the locations and the record stores that were that great. It was basically a lot harder to get imports. So when I first started, I, I started off with the American stuff. I showed Abbey Road, and that was a British pressing. That was my brother's. So that was kind of neat, because ironically, my brother had a British press of that. But anyway, I was talking about this album, believe it or not. I know I rambled on about something else, but this album has a lot of meaning, because when this album came out, my dad uh, was with us when we were in the car, and he went and got this album for me in the record store and put it in the bag and all that and you know we all sat in the car and waited but he got this for my birthday and this was the Beatles album that was put out and I, I guess the original press uh, when it came out my dad was very very much against me being with the Beatles um, he didn't like me spending any money on the Beatles and I've kind of deprived myself, and I haven't bought anything Beatle-wise at all in a long time. Yeah, right. As you look around me, I've got nothing but Beatles. <laughs> so my dad was strongly against me buying Beatles, and I, I loved the Beatles. I enjoyed their music. It cheered me up after a hard day's work or a hard day at school. It cheered me up. Um, so this album has a lot of meaning for me because my dad, who has passed away now, but my dad uh, was against buying Beatle albums and was against me and doing all that, like I said. Um, so it's kind of special that he would go out and buy this for my birthday. So deep down, even though he didn't like me doing that, he kind of knew that I still was interested in, in having a Beatles albums and getting the newest one. So that was kind of special that he even thought to buy Beatles albums instead of buying clothes and, and the other stuff that kids get when you get a little bit older. You're kind of like, oh gosh, I don't want more clothes. I want Beatle albums. And like a lot of you, you have gotten this album. I got this album as well. Sorry about the glare. Double Fantasy. I know 
Uh, everybody's kind of talked about it. Paul and uh, Joe have talked about this as well. But this album means a lot to me. This was John's album comeback. He was in retirement. He was he was uh, not doing anything, and then this album came out. And I remember being in school, and in the classroom that I was in, they they played "Starting Over," and that was great. And so I remember listening to it on the radio, and they'd say, "That's the newest from John Lennon and Yoko Ono." By the way, John Lennon's got a new album coming out. Blah blah blah, and they mentioned it. And so I was all excited. So I bought this the day it came out. I bought pretty much every Beatle album and McCartney and George Harrison. I, I love buying them on the day that they come out. So I bought this John Lennon one on the day it came out. And where I lived, there was no hype stickers. They didn't, they didn't have those hype stickers on albums for some reason. So mine, mine does not have a hype sticker. I've seen them with the hype stickers now. And... But when I bought mine originally, it didn't have it. So, but this album meant a lot to me that John was back. John had a brand new album. And the excitement of hearing this for the first time. And, and another exciting, let me give you a little little tidbit into John's life at this time also. When he did this song, um, when he did the song Just Like Starting Over, he was getting ready, they were getting ready to press this album. They were going to press. The whole thing was done. The album was over. And it was and the, the the song title was starting over, and at that time, as John said, there was a country album that came out at that time, right when he did get ready to release his album, and so John Lennon had to go back in the studio and put the uh, just like starting over at the very beginning of it because it's in parentheses if you notice that. So they did it last minute, but his song was going to be starting over. But since there was a country song, he didn't want it to be confused with the country song and everybody, you know, not knowing what he's talking about or playing the other song or something like that, I guess. So that's why he changed it at the last minute for uh, Just Like Starting Over. So anyway, this album has a lot of happy memories for me of getting it when it came out and the thrill of all of that. And then shortly after, a couple weeks after, the uh, unbelievable tragedy of losing John. And at that time, in 1980, it was a big deal. Celebrities and musicians and rock stars and all that, nobody got shot. As far as I know, let me know, Vital Community, if you know. But I think John was maybe the first rock celebrity who got shot. Um, that just didn't happen. You know, people didn't shoot rock people and musicians and all that kind of stuff. But I might, I might be mistaken on that. But anyway, you might know better than I do. But if, if so, then John was one of the very first musicians to be shot. And that was kind of a big deal, too. That was huge. I mean, we're talking about 1980. Oh, my gosh. Okay, next album up is the Beatles' Christmas album. I saw this in my store... This original press. This album was out, and I remember it sitting up on the rack, and I couldn't believe it. I never saw this album before. This is like when I'm first starting collecting. So this album has a lot of memories in the fact that I never saw this album. You know, never saw the Flaxy discs either. But in 70, this album came out, and I didn't get this album until I think 78 or 79. But this album has a lot of memories because this was the uh, Beatles Christmas album and this was the first time when I bought it was back then. So this is an original press and I was totally amazed to find and to get the Beatles Christmas album in my local record store and that they had that. So that was, that was fantastic to get that album. Next album up is Band on the Run, Paul McCartney. For me, this album was the very first album that I bought with my own money. So when this album came out, I remember buying it brand new and buying it in the store when it first came out. I got it like a couple days afterwards when it, when it first got released. I used to buy all of them the day they came out. But it was exciting to get this album because this was the very first album that I bought with my own money. Original press with the poster. And that was kind of exciting because that was the first album. So that was my first money and that's what I bought. 
made my dad real happy, like I said earlier, about collecting Beatle albums. Then this is my next album. And this album I bought in Liverpool when I went to the Beatles, um, Beatles story and the museum and all that in Liverpool. I was all excited thinking, you know, the gift shop was going to be fantastic with all kinds of Beatles stuff and Beatles collectibles and all that. And I got in there and it was all, all the albums were all just the British press. So I'm, I'm going through it going, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, I've got it, I've got it. And it's like, oh man, I can't believe it, I've got all the albums except for this one. So this has meaning to me because that's when I was in Liverpool and went to the gift shop and got this album. And that was the only time I got that a record in Liverpool was that. And the gift shop had just junk stuff. It had pens and pencils and t-shirts and stuff like that, which, you know, eh, it's okay. But, you know, I'm kind of looking for more fun, beatly things. So, okay, next album up is this one. Um, I saw this in my local record store. And where I used to live, this was the very first bootleg that I ever bought. And for me, see, it's a very plain cover. For me, this album was really, really special because this was the first one. And when I bought Beetle Bootlegs, this is in 79 when I got this album. Um, but when I bought this album, you had to go in the back room to look at albums. You had to look at them back there in the back room. You couldn't be out in the front with the record store. And the name of the store was Second Time Around, and I thought, oh man, that's a terrible... Who would want second-hand records? You know, why would you want to buy second-hand albums? But anyway, here's my... I even kept my original receipt. So look at that, $6.24. Oh boy, we're spending money today. That's big bucks. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there, there's my original receipt with this album. Um... And I thought that picture was great because that's the picture of the Beatles in the viewing room where they watched uh, Yellow Submarine. So I thought that was really cool. Everything that's on this has already been released. There isn't anything special on this album anymore. Um, but you know my name, look up the number, was the very first time I heard that song on this album. And I just thought it was the most freakiest song I've ever heard. Or not, you know my name. Um... I think that was it. Um, yeah, I think it was it. But anyway, it was just a real freaky song. Just couldn't believe it. But anyway, there's a lot of other stuff on here. But that's that album. And then my next album was from a radio show that I used to listen to in the 70s. And the album... This doesn't count as the album because this, this would be number 11. But anyway, remember the radio show, Dr. Demeno? This is the album from Dr. Demento. I used to listen to Dr. Demento in the 70s and a little bit in the 80s, but mostly in the early, early, from like 1970 on. But at that time, they did play off of this 45, You Know My Name, Look Up the Number. And that's what got me started into bootlegs was this album, this 45 and this album. So I, I couldn't believe it. That was incredible. That was just so unusual and so rare that I've never heard it before. So that actually is what got me into buying more than just the Beatle albums, was this album, Let It Be. Um, and then the other special thing about this album, this has got two, kind of a two-fold special thing about Let It Be for me. <coughs> Excuse me. The first thing is, Let It Be, for me, was, I remember hearing on the radio, Get Back. They're playing Get Back on this album, and they said, oh, this is the last album of the Beatles. The Beatles are breaking up. And I'm thinking, at that time, I really didn't know who the Beatles were, but, you know, I was like, oh, gosh, they're breaking up. That's too bad, you know, this band. But, boy, I really like the song Get Back. So that was off this album, Let It Be. And it was so exciting to hear that on the radio. And what a thrill it was to hear that song. And I've, I never got over it. Never forgot about it. Um, make sure I get this right. 
so that that was an exciting thing to hear let it to to hear off of the let it be album uh, was get back so that was kind of a fun and exciting memory for me and then also when rock show came out this is my ticket stub when rocket show came out they had a midnight showing of it of let it be and rock show so this is my ticket this is kind of a two thing but this is my ticket to when i went to go see at the radio station put on a special promotion midnight um thing to go see rock show and to go see let it be and what an excitement it was to see let it be in the theater and all of that and it was a midnight showing and rock show they showed that right after uh the movie let it be and i knew the guys my brother was real good friends with the guys at the radio station so i got the promotional poster for a rock show and it was a huge big movie theater it was out in the glass um thing of the theater so you know the glass where they show the movies and all that kind of stuff. I don't have that anymore. I sold that. Um, but that was really pretty cool to get the poster, the promotional poster for Rock Show. Um, and that was real exciting. Really kind of fun to have that. So Let It Be and Rock Show and Let It Be itself is a great, great special memory and get back. So that was kind of fun. All right. I have finally talked a lot. So I hope you all are still with me. But the last album is this one, Julian Lennon. And as you can see, I got it signed by Julian Lennon. A friend of mine kind of tipped me off who worked at the airport where I used to live um, about Julian Lennon being in town and that he was flying in. And so uh, I took my album down there and had him sign it. And I met Julian this still isn't in the it's the shrink wraps out and everything else it's just the regular capital or regular standard it's not capital uh, i forgot what pressing he's on but anyway i got the regular album it's, it's nothing nothing special nothing imported but a friend of mine told me about him being down there at the airport so i met him and he was he was nice here's the vinyl he was nice. He was very shy, very quiet. You know, he was moving on at the airport. It wasn't like he wanted to stand there for a half hour and have a coffee and talk. So he basically just signed my album and moved on. So that was kind of exciting in the fact that um, I get to meet, got to meet Jillian Lennon, got to talk to him and say hello and say thanks for the music and all that kind of stuff. And just, you know, instead of going to uh, buying it online or buying it at a show or something like that. I got to actually meet him and talk to him. So that's kind of, at that time when this album came out, I, that was kind of exciting for me to talk to him and meet him. So those are my 10 albums. Um, wow, this was actually kind of difficult. I had a hard time, so, because I could have chosen 15 albums easily, um, or maybe even 20, but I, I, did, I did make it through. And I uh, want to say hi to my new subscribers and uh, let you know I thank you very much for being a part of uh, the vinyl community. Here's a hug. <laughs> Here's a hug. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of it. And thank you for uh, typing back to me and letting me know what you think. Uh, let me know about your thoughts, what you thought of me doing these 10 albums. Maybe these aren't your 10 albums. And your memories are going to be totally different than mine, because mine are scrambled and messed up anyway. <laughs> but let me know uh, what you thought. Maybe you've got ten. So jump on in and do the video like Joe's telling everybody. Uh, jump in and do a video and let us know what you thought of uh, your ten albums and what your memories are. Uh, I've got a lot more memories, a lot more stories. I think everything that I've bought has a memory. So I've got over 2,000 albums worth of memories, close to 3,000 memories of uh, just vinyl. I think all of us can do that too. So, but anyway, okay, vinyl community, I keep talking and uh, you got things to do and so do I. So as I say, vinyl community, appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and I am out of here. See you, vinyl community.